His bold experiments with designs and styles revolutionized how society interacted with high fashion. One of his main creations is the ready-to-wear system that is adopted by virtually every high-end brand in the world. He became famous for his rebellious approach that blurred the lines between men's and women's fashion. He managed to empower people with innovative garments and convince the whole world that fashion was an art. Welcome to Personality Matters, I'm Arthur Kemps, and today we will be talking about Yves Saint Laurent. Yves Saint Laurent was born in 1936 in Algeria. He grew up in a small villa just by the Mediterranean with his parents and sisters. Yves' childhood was anything but easy. He was constantly bullied in school for appearing homosexual. As a result, little Eve became a highly nervous child, but in a way, his anxiety set the background for his artistic development, as he often found solace in the fashion world. What started as playing with scraps to design couture ensembles for paper dolls quickly evolved into creating innovative dresses for his sister and mother. When he was 17, his talent was so evident that his mother decided to take him to Paris to meet the editor of French Vogue, Michael de Brunov. It was a meeting that would seal Saint Laurent's destiny as a fashion icon, because Brunov was impressed. Soon Saint Laurent moved to Paris and enrolled in the prestigious fashion design school, Chambre Syndicale de la Couture. And a bit later, another great thing happened. He met Christian Dior, who was already a fashion industry giant. Well, this kind of meeting could impress everyone, and Saint Laurent was probably quite impressed. He would recall later in his life, Dior fascinated me. He taught me the basis of my art. Saint Laurent became Dior's assistant, and under the icon's tutelage, his style matured and gained more recognition. Unexpectedly, in 1957, Dior died of a heart attack, so a 21-year-old Saint Laurent was made the creative director for the prestigious fashion house, and with his first collection, the spring 1958 Trapeze collection, he saved the house from financial ruin. Although soon, things turned ugly. In 1960, he was called to serve in the French army during the Algerian independence war. In the army, he became once again a victim of bullying that was now in the form of hazing, although soon he was sent to a military hospital, where he received the unsettling news that he had been released from his post of creative director for Dior. Well, his condition got really bad, which made doctors use a large amount of sedatives, psychoactive drugs and even shock therapy. Of course, all that affected his health. He would later come to blame his time at the military hospital for his depression and addictions that plagued him for the rest of his life. After being released from hospital, Saint Laurent sued Dior for breach of contract and won the case. He got a lofty compensation and decided to kickstart his own label with his business partner Pierre Berger. It was the 1960s. His timing couldn't have been better with the rise of pop culture and the growing demand for original fresh designs that would reflect the spirit of the time. Well, we know that Saint Laurent achieved the status of an icon due to his influence on in the fashion industry. But what exactly did he do that we consider him a great fashion designer? First, he gave women the same clothes as men. When he launched Le Smokin in 1966, it was still controversial for women to wear trousers in public. American socialite Nan Kemper was even turned down from the coveted restaurant in New York for wearing her Yves Saint Laurent tuxedo suit. So, Le Smokin was a garment of rebellion, androgyny and glamour. Saint Laurent said, I wanted women to have the same basic wardrobe as a man. I believed women wanted this. And he was right, his style was quickly adopted by many famous figures, such as Liza Minnelli, Bianca Jagger and Catherine Deneuve. So, Le Smokin was a sign of empowerment and bravado. As Pierre Berger once said, Gabriel Chanel gave women freedom. Yves Saint Laurent gave them power. Secondly, he masterfully combined art with fashion. The love affair between these two might seem trivial today, but Saint Laurent was one of the first to put art on the runaway, so he largely integrated the works of Warhol, Van Gogh, Matisse and Braque into his designs. Perhaps his most notorious effort 
Eiffert was the 1965 Modrian collection. It was composed of six cocktail dresses inspired by Pete Modrian's grid line paintings. The collection laid the foundation for a refined aesthetic focused on simple cuts and geometric lines. Finally, as we have said before, he revolutionized how society interacted with high fashion. In 1966, he opened the Rive Gauche boutique where he introduced high-end clothes that were supposed to be produced on a larger scale than his regular exclusive collections. It was the birth of the ready-to-wear system that has been adopted by virtually every high brand in the world. But Saint Laurent was the first couture to open a boutique of this kind under his name in France. If Saint Laurent was an innovative artist with bold artistic imagination, he constantly parted ways from the status quo and, as a result, shaped the industry for the decades to come. As he once said, I tried to show that fashion is an art. For that, I followed the counsel of my master Christian Dior and the imperishable lesson of Mademoiselle Chanel. I created for my era and tried to foresee what tomorrow would be. Thank you for watching Personality Matters. We talk about people who made the world. Until next time, I am Arthur Kemps.